this is a topic which has become really interesting in the last 10 years or so. So, we will start with some looking at some new recent flash fire right. So, this was <coughs> something that we will try to learn over the course of next one hour. So, you know this was a news uh, article in the summer over uh, Wall Street Journal. What it says is that you know the next iPhone, this was before iPhone 5 was announced that it is going to be a millimeter thinner and a lot of it has to do with the display and how the packaging of the display is done. This is another news article that you know it says that Xilinx which is a company which uh, makes the uh, FPGAs or these field programs or these gate arrays. It has not been able to you know get too much performance benefit out of Moore's law recently and what they did was they announce these uh, chips which are four chips instead of one combined into a single package mm -hmm. and that gives them a much better performance as compared to so this one package has four of their FPGA chips and that gives them a much better performance also lo lowers their cost associated with making that chip. So we will learn how is that possible. There is another article. Uh, I used to work with this group at IBM. So, it says that IBM is going to announce this, uh, it is working with Micron and they are announcing these uh, 3D chips and it is essentially called a memory cube. It is right now sampling uh, with, uh, uh, with customers right now and it says that you know using stacking these uh, chips in a 3D manner, uh, you could uh, um, you could get significant performance benefits. This quote from one of my uh, previous boss at IBM, and they presented a paper on this at uh, IBM as well. So these are some of the things we'll try to learn uh, over uh, this uh, week. And there's some even more recent uh, news. So you know, last week there was uh, some of you might have seen the the webcast, you know, there was a event announcing the iPad uh, mini, but they also refreshed their uh, rest of the product lineup. We'll talk about the display of iPad mini specifically next week when we talk about display, but they, every time uh, they uh, refresh their Mac or iMac, they have this picture where it shows, you know, the evolution of the Mac from the iMac to, you know, the current generation and it uh, it's kind of you know it's a uh, artistic play on this other picture of which shows the evolution of man standing uh, from you know from ape to uh, the current as you know as we look now and uh, a lot of that has to do with packaging as we'll just see over the next uh, over this week so let's you know look at evolution of uh, packaging from uh, from 1970s uh, to to the present date, so I'm I'm sure you know you must have seen packages which used to look like uh, this, right? So they, this is uh, uh, still if you take any E uh, lab class, any undergrad uh, E class, you'll be uh, using these uh, DIP packages, which stand for uh, dual uh, inline package. So you'll have it's called dual inline because there are two of these lines and these pins are in a line. So it's a, a dip package that is uh, that was the first package that was used uh, uh, in the 1970s and it's still used for you know hobby electronics and uh, breadboard kind of stuff. But there's only so many pins that you can uh, you know you could. Uh, have uh, coming out of your uh, package if you have a, a dip scheme because uh, uh, you can keep a, the only way to have more IOs coming out of this is you know you keep making your package uh, taller and taller but the maximum pins that people could get out of this kind of package was around uh, 50 or 60. So this in 1975 or 80s, people uh, introduced this uh, uh, quadruple flat package. So instead of having the pins coming out on two sides, you'll have 
spins coming out on all four sides. And I'm sure if any of you had done any uh, PCB uh, uh, based soldering, you still use uh, these QFP packages. And they come in multiple forms. Sometimes it's called TQFP, sometimes it's called very flat QFP. Or so there are multiple variants of this. So there will be typically two or three more letters placed in the front, but the last three letters would be QFP. And the maximum amount of pins you can get using these uh, QFP packages was, you know, you could have 50 or 100 of these pins on one side, so you'll have up to 200 or, you know, a maximum of 300, 400 pins coming out of this kind of a package. So this was, again, you know, not sufficient. People wanted more and more IOs coming uh, into or out of their uh, chip, especially this was a bottleneck for your microprocessor chips because microprocessors around this time moved from being 16-bit to 32-bit. So you wanted more I/O because you essentially moved your uh, uh, the bit counts on your uh, processor. So they moved to this thing called uh, PGA packages, or pin grid uh, array packages. And what they were, essentially, instead of having just pins on uh, four sides, you could have these uh, gridded array of pins. And uh, uh, this is, you know, if you used to own a PC in uh, 2000, not 2000, but before that, maybe around 95 or 96, most of these microprocessors, you could take them out. You could actually, you know, remove the uh, fan on the top and you could remove this uh, package out because they were using this uh, P PGA package which you could uh, take out uh, and then place it back again. So it used to be that socket, there was a male connector and a female connector so you could place it in that uh, uh, female socket and uh, still pay, play around with your microprocessor. <coughs> so the next evolution of this was there were uh, some structural, uh, essentially with that PGA package, you have these pins sticking out, and if you try to increase the density of these uh, pins, uh, they are, you know, these pins have structural limits, and uh, they, you know, every time you take them out, they fall apart. So what people did, again, in 1990 was they switched from that PGA package so they switched from an array of a grid array of pins to a grid array of solder balls. So this is uh, the it's still the most prevalent package uh, that you it's used uh, uh, in the industry, and uh, it's essentially a grid array of these solder balls. So you have these solder balls, and uh, um, what you can see over here these is that these solder balls are just on the periphery. Of uh, your uh, of your package, they are not in the middle. The reason uh, for this is that uh, the way this package is implemented is you will have your IC actually placed in the center. So your piece of silicon would be placed in the center, and then you will be having these uh, uh, gold wires, which would be uh, wire bonded to your silicon. And then they'll be wire bonded to your uh, to your uh, to your uh, package. And this package is typically a organic material. It's a laminate. Uh, the most common laminate is FC4 laminate. And uh, so you'll be having these uh, uh, wires connecting your die to the actual package. That's why it used to look empty uh, in the middle. The neat thing about it is that there are no pins coming out on the side. So if you look, most of uh, we looked at the iPhone 5 tier down uh, at the very beginning of the class. So if you look at that iPhone uh, uh, PCB from the top, or even your iPad PCB or your MacBook PCB, you won't see any connections on the side. So if you look at this chip, right, there's no pins coming out from the side. So it almost looks, you know, the chip is floating in the air or you sometimes wonder, you know, where the connections are to that chip. So if you really want to look at those connections, you need to uh, take this board and turn it around by 90 degrees. And 
then when you look from the side, you see these array of solder balls which are connecting your uh, uh, package, which are connecting your chip to this uh, to this PCB. And uh, while it's uh, needed, it also makes you know things very difficult for uh, hobby uh, hobby electronic uh, people because if now you are a hobby electronic and if one of the chips goes wrong, there's it's very easy, very hard to uh, you know manually desolder this chip and then solder it back, especially if it's using this uh, BGA kind of package. So that's that's one of the disadvantage, but I guess you know not many people open or repair these uh, iPhones themselves. So that is the current uh, uh, package which is uh, used. The next evolution which happened around 2000 was instead of having those pins just at the periphery, those having those uh, uh, solder balls just at the periphery, now you have these uh, solar balls everywhere. So how did that happen now? Where is, how is the chip connected? So the next evolution which happened was this flip chip uh, packaging. And uh, uh, what really happened was uh, you used to have that chip connect facing on uh, top and you'll be having those wire uh, bonds connecting the chip to your package. But now what they did was they took the chip and flipped it around. So uh, instead of having those wire bonds, you had these, uh, all these IOs coming out from your silicon directly. And then you'll be having these uh, solder bumps which would connect your, uh, connect your piece of silicon to this uh, package directly. And uh, not all the chips uh, use this, only chips which have very high uh, number of uh, input output pins coming out, uh, they use this uh, flip chip uh, ball grid array package. So we talked about uh, how, so let me, you know, uh, refresh your memory again, how do we make these uh, micro bumps that you, that enable this uh, flip chip uh, uh, packaging. So you, you know, this is the process flow of making a microprocessor that we discussed in uh, week two. So you'll end up with making all these uh, back end of the line interconnects. And finally what you do is you uh, pattern your very top layer and you expose it, you uh, uh, develop it into that uh, rounded shape and then you uh, uh, you place some uh, initial metal which acts as a seed layer then you uh, fill it up with resist, then you electroplate it with copper, and then finally you fill it up, uh, you do an electrochemical deposition of solder, so essentially you take that chip and dip it into a solder bath, and that uh, solder is, it forms the shape of that bump. And there's a lot of technology which goes into, you know, how do you detect whether those bumps have holes or not, because those, if those, if those solar uh, bumps have uh, uh, air trapped inside them, then that becomes a major cause of uh, failure of your overall package. But I mean, in the end, you what you do is you strip off that resist, and you are left with a solar bump on top of your chip. And what you do next is essentially take that chip and just flip it on its head and place it on this uh, package. And that's how most of these uh, microprocessors uh, today are packaged. Another thing which happened uh, in uh, around the same time frame, around early uh, 2000, was uh, this uh, uh, whole movement around uh, doing lead-free packaging. So there's a bill passed first in Europe, resist of hazardous substance bill and the same bill was passed in US and they got essentially they got rid of uh, lead from the packaging and if you get rid rid of if you get rid of lead from uh, tin uh, solder uh, tin is essentially a very uh, a very soft metal and if you flow current through it it just migrates with the current so it forms these things which are called as tin whiskers 
and especially when you get rid of tin, it's you know it's it's like a whisker of you know your cat has whisker that's similar to that. So your these tin wires or these tin solders will over the period of time they develop these whiskers which uh, uh, short your chips uh, over time. So this is this is one of the disadvantages you get if you get rid of lead, but uh, uh, this is something that basically people have uh, learned how to live with. But uh, this is one of the major cause of failures uh, uh, in uh, one of the pack in in uh, in chips that are shipped out uh, in packages without lead. So if you look back and uh, see what drove these. Uh, uh, changes uh, in the past in chip packaging. They were essentially driven by uh, change in these pin counts. So you know each of these technology, you look at multiple technologies, they progress and then essentially they saturate and people move to the next paradigm. So people, uh, it's it's similar thing you know with transistors, people started with vacuum tubes then they Vacuum teams stop progressing, they move to BJTs, then they moved along BJTs, then they switched to MOSFETs, and now MOSFETs have stopped uh, progressing. So similar to similar story in packaging, uh, you started with this dip packages, and then the number of pins kept on increasing unless it became uh, too long of a chip. So people moved to this uh, quadruple flat package that enabled around a maximum of 200 pins. And then people move to this uh, ball grid array package, and that is supposed to allow up to a thousand pins. And uh, um, and these more and more number of IOs are needed, primarily because you're, uh, especially if you're operating a microprocessor, you changed it from a 16-bit to a 32-bit to a 64-bit, uh, so that increases your pin count. Nowadays, what's driving this pin count is you are uh, moving to more and more system on chip. So if you add more and more functionality to your chip, you bring you need to bring all those IOs uh, from your other analog chips or from your other, uh, uh, from your gyroscope, from your MEMS chips to your microprocessor. So that again adds more and more number of pins that your microprocessor needs to have. So this is a good chart which summarizes uh, all these changes. So from 70 to you know 2000, there were maybe you know five six changes. But w what we see now is like there's so many of these uh, changes on the horizon, and we, I'll talk about some of those. But I don't have time to talk about all. But I'll talk about this 2.5D or interposer technology. I'll talk about 3D IC. But there are these so many things going on. There's uh, wafer level packaging. There is uh, fan out packaging, there's package on package. So there's, it's, it's the same cliche that you hear, you know, technology is changing at an exponential pace and you see much more uh, changes on the horizon. The driving factor has changed from just being increase in pin count. What's driving this packaging technology now is that you actually get performance benefit, you get power reduction, you get improvement in bandwidth when you go through those go to those packaging technologies. And whenever you hear term like performance and bandwidth, that means money. So there's packaging used to be, you know, maybe one percent of your chip cost. It's moving increasingly to be uh, more than uh, uh, 10, 20 percent of your chip cost. So there's a lot of money which is uh, moving in the field of packaging, and that's why everybody wants. Uh, piece of the pie, including the company that I work for. So there are a lot of people who want to get uh, involved in this field uh, right now. 